Alright, g'day guys and welcome back tonight to another Obsidian video. Tonight we're going to be looking at a important topic and that is how to import all of my data into Obsidian in the easiest and most efficient way possible. For many of us, uh, cut and pasting or copy and pasting is, uh, you know, the, the, the method we've all begun with. Uh, but some of us uh, get sick and tired of doing that and we've uh, sort of started exploring other methods and means over the years of how to get the data in more efficiently. Um, I've done so much so that it, you know I'm basically working in a data or analytical role these days. It's uh, it's a it's a skill set, guys, and uh, once you've learnt it, it can be really beneficial to your to your common work jobs and um, things like that. So um, anyway, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at Farling's fantastic JSON CSV import tool. Uh, it is just called the the JSON CSV import tool inside of it, but you know it's fantastic and Farling's amazing. So let's just rename it. All right, without further ado, let's jump over and have a look. All right, so in front of me, you can see I've got the Demo Vault 2 going on. Um, got all sorts of things going in here that we've been testing over there the last couple of months. Um, and what we're gonna do is just go through the process of getting this thing installed. So come down here to settings. We're gonna come in here to community plugins. We're gonna go browse. And we're gonna do a search for import. So JSON CSV importer, you can tell you've got the right one because it's got Filing42 in it. Filing's uh, obviously the guy we want to really be uh, uh, working with. He's uh, been supporting the uh, Realmworks community for years and supporting the uh, the Obsidian communities. We've moved over to this tool as well. It was very quick to put this in. Obviously with everything, go through and click install. Um, once it's installed, click enable. And while you're doing that, obviously you can come down here and have a look at the readme file. Now I do want to point out that there's something really cool in here that you can uh, have a look. So handlebarsjs.com slash guide. I highly recommend you give this a look. All right, and we can see here that basically what we've got is a, uh, a list of basic, um, oh, I guess you'd say sort of templates and uh, readme files on how to use those templates. But basically handlebar is a, um, it's, it's a template format that's used by other sort of programs in order to import data. And what it's going to do is it's going to give you uh, instructions on how to import data. And I'm going to show you the very basics of how to use this application. All right. Let it be known that there is more advanced stuff inside of these readme's. And if you're uh, doing a lot of this, you probably want to sit down and have a bit of a read and just start to really learn and understand exactly what this thing can do. I highly recommend it. All right, but we're not going to be uh, going into the depths of that today. Um, I've installed it. I've enabled it. Fantastic. Come back down here to my demo vault. And the first thing I need to do is really sort of set up a folder where I want all this stuff to go. So I'm going to go import test is my folder. All right, I want everything to come into here. All right, the next thing I need is a source file. So what I've done is I've just gone onto the internet done a random Google for a, uh, a table. Uh, this one came from uh, Google Sheets. Uh, someone's shared basically a list of tables on spell items and magic items and stuff, the prices and the rarity of them. All right, I'm just using this as an example, guys. You could do any combination of data that you want. All right, if you can find the data out there in an Excel spreadsheet or copy your data into an Excel spreadsheet, go for your life. And I want, you know, you know, just to make you think outside the box, like if you could find a spreadsheet of monsters, then effectively you could import entire monsters with this thing. So what I've done is I've uh, I found my table online, I've copied it into an Excel, and I've saved it as a .csv file. Now that's very important. .csv files don't have any formatting. You can see I've copied the formatting over here. Uh, but if I was to basically now open that thing, now that I've saved it again, it should drop everything off. All right, so let's just try that. Let's just go close. And we'll go Excel. And we're going to try and break this thing. We'll reopen book two. All right, there we go. So CSV files don't have any formatting. It is literally just text. You can open them up into a, a notepad. You can see the format of things that are going on. But the really important things to take away is this top row here. All right, because these are our column names and we need to make sure that we know what these are. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that over to the side just so I can uh, keep looking at it. Uh, I've got some other stuff going on here. We'll close that down. 
Um, so yeah, I've got uh, an Excel spreadsheet. All right, and now we need to uh, create something called a handlebar file. Now, the good thing about a handlebar file is that they are incredibly simple. I've got one here that I've made already. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like. It's a note, all right? So all I've done is create a note. I've named it something. In this case, I've called it my handlebar template for magic items. And then I've written my note, all right? I've just written it like I would normally. So I put my tags in here. I put my name, all right? But you see the thing that starts to stand out is this here. All right, if I bring this back, you'll see that what I've done here is in these inside these curly brackets, I've basically gone through and replicated the name of the columns that I want to import. So I'm going to copy the name of here into there, the name again into here, the price into there, the rarity into there. And then just as an example to show you, you know, just how, how flexible this thing is, I've gone and made a table, all right, where I've just copied it through again. So you can certainly do that as well. All right, so all you have to do is go curly bracket, curly bracket, the name of the column, end curly bracket, end curly bracket, and you're done. That's it. All right, that's very simple, right? If you have 100 columns in your Excel spreadsheet, you could map all 100 of them. You could format this however you want. You could bold the headings, italics, lay it out. You could probably add, no, let's just try this, right? Uh, import, no. Uh, Oh, it's been a while. Call out, here we go. Read aloud. This is my text. I have this name in my bag. Just as an example, right? Just to show that it can be done. All right. That's a handlebar file. That's 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 it. There's nothing really much that much to it. Um, you're basically just creating a file or a note inside of Obsidian that tells you where you want to import those items when they come from your your spreadsheet. And with that, we then come over here to the JSON CSV importer icon, which will be down your left-hand side here. Choose JSV CSV file. So we're going to go choose file, and I'm going to use the uh, the book two dot CSV that I saved before choose template file. So this is my handlebar file that I just created. So I know that that's in my vault. Uh, so we're going to go to Obsidian Demo Vault 2. It's in, where is it? Templates. And it's a markdown and it is my handlebar magic items. All right, so that's now selected. Field to use as a note name. All right, so I want my files to be named according to well, in this case here, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the name of the, uh, the the magic item. That's fine. Now, which folder do I want to put it in? I'm going to put it into the import test. All right. Now, just to show you just how cool this thing is, right? Like import test right now is empty. There is nothing in here. All right. We come back to here. Oh, I've got to do this again. I take long. Uh, if I can remember where I put everything. There okay. Now ready, set, go. Boom, import finished. Okay, so what has it done? Well, let's go and have a look. It's not empty anymore. All right. What it's done, it has imported and created a new note for every single one of these. Interestingly, I've actually got more. Have I? Oh no, it's just, uh, it's, okay. It's alphabeticalized now. Cool. All right, then what do these look like? Well, we can come in here and have a look. We've got the, the tag that we put in. We've got the name came in, the price, the rarity, the table populated, and the callout box worked. All right, now you can see it's created one note for every single line in my table. And you can see instantly how useful that can be, right? You just have to go and, I don't know, let's say, well, uh, 
can you find an NPC spreadsheet online, for example? I'm pretty sure there's actually a Reddit out there of D&D &D DMs who have been collecting NPCs for a while. There's thousands of them. Technically, you can import the whole thing. Or if you could find like an SRD file that contains all the monsters or the, all the spells, you can import all that. All right, simples. <laughs> so yeah, that is, uh, that's Filing's CSV JSON importer. Uh, again, this is just a simple demo of how the functionality works, just to get your head sort of uh, in the mindset of thinking about what you could do with this thing. It does work on JSON. JSON files, uh, which means technically if you were playing with 5th edition monsters, you could do the, the import from there as well. Um, I will say though that JSON is more complex than CSV. <coughs> um, JSON tends to have nested data elements, and what I mean by that is there's usually a parent uh, item, and then underneath the parent there might be different items. So, <coughs> for example, there might be a parent variable called attributes. And then inside the attributes, you might find another variable called strength and dexterity and constitution. So when that happens, you're going to need to sort of jump into that readme file and, and really sort of uh, go through and find out how you can access the, the sub layers of that. Um, I've played around with it. I, I managed to get it working. I haven't got it working completely accurately to what I wanted. Um, so I, I stopped playing with it, but I found some other ways to do what I wanted to need, need to do myself. Um, but yeah, obviously, if you're you're playing with bulk data, or, you know this is a fantastic way to get data into the tool, and it's not not really that technical. So for those of you who aren't data analysts or don't understand SQL or don't want to dive into Kanaim or uh, Altrix or something like that, you know this is a really fantastic option. So yeah, anyway, guys, I hope that's uh, been useful for you. Um, hope it uh, helps obviously get your uh, your data into the tool in a, a much more efficient way. And uh, yeah, we'll see what you guys can do with it. So outside of that, I'll speak to you guys on the forums. Have a great day.